Hi guys, welcome back. In case you guys don't know, this is Ariana Rye and I'm Lauren, Ariana's mom. If you're new to our page, please subscribe. This is where we share Ariana's journey. Today we are doing questions and answers. You guys left us some really great questions on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok, and we're gonna answer them all today. All right guys, so let's get to it. One of the first questions we have is, what's her favorite food? So let's start off easy. So one of Ariana's favorite food is sushi. So when we go out to sushi, she eats some ginger. She likes um, California rolls, like the imitation crab inside. She does a little bit of the white rice. Uh, and she likes the eel a lot, the baked eel. Sushi is Ariana's favorite food. And what is Ariana's favorite animal? What is your favorite animal? We do try to take Ariana to the zoo a lot. So she likes lions, they're big. You know, she did feed a giraffe in Wisconsin once, and I think she's a little indifferent, indifferent about giraffes because um, he kind of like took her whole arm and tried to eat her arm. It was, it was, it was cute, but a little scary for Ari too. So I'm not sure if it's a giraffe. Um, she definitely likes dogs. We have one dog at home. Her name is Bella. She's a little morky. Bella! Bella! Here's Bella, our dog. Ariana loves Bella. Here's her doggy. Does Ariana love the Boilermakers as much as you? Great question. Since Jason and I are both Purdue alumni, uh, Ariana does love the Boilermakers naturally. We took her to West Lafayette. Jason's family still lives in Lafayette, Indiana. So we go to Indiana quite a bit for either seeing family or going to football games. We definitely want to go to a basketball game here soon. So, uh, so yes, Ariana definitely loves the Boilermakers as much as we do. Boiler up, boiler up. The question is, how do you manage perceived pain? and if the spasticity causes Ariana pain. The spasticity definitely causes Ariana pain. When She's actually in a really nice tone right now, uh, but when she has reflux or she's actively going through something like shocks, she tenses up and yes, it does hurt. So at nighttime, she has reflux because she's laying down or maybe just because she's sleeping and her muscles don't know what to do and they, they contract. It feels like a Charlie horse for you or me. So it's really painful for people with cerebral palsy. For sure. And I don't think she's able to communicate that very well. She yells and she shows me she's in pain. She grimaces. She has great facial expressions that show her feelings. And we try to help that pain by giving her muscle relaxers, such as Tizanidine. Right now she's in low tone. Her head is just relaxed. Her arms are relaxed. When she's in high tone, you'll see her kind of bring her arms in, scissor her legs. Um, basically, she looks like she's uncomfortable with that high tone, and it, it, it is for these kids, so great question. Hi, my name is Elena. My daughter has CP, and she wants to know more about the G2, the tomato chair, and our nonprofit. We got Ariana's G2 just recently. She's six years old. She used to have normal weight gain, normal progression, and then it wasn't until more recently where her, her vomiting was uncontrollable. She had a couple GI bugs last year, and it kind of her gut health became so poor that she was unable to hold food down. She failed her to thrive, can't gain weight, only throwing up, can't fear anything in my mouth. She's been in so much pain for the past six to eight months that we knew we had to do something. She was throwing up bright red blood, meaning new blood. She was throwing up old blood. It was just like buckets of vomiting. I could not get any food in her, or any calories in her. We took her to the ER when she wouldn't stop throwing up and was throwing up bright red blood and her glucose was less than 50. She was admitted. I mean, that's like coma status and the hypoglycemia was so low that could have triggered seizures, coma, et cetera. It's really scary. So um, we could not get it under control. So we opted for a G-tube and we started doing formula through G-tube and vomiting never stopped. It wasn't until we stopped her formula, she was on Kate Farms, that now her vomiting has stopped. So we continued food by mouth and we used a G2 mainly for water, which has been, you know, great because Ariana doesn't want to drink water by mouth. She actually drinks just a lot of Pedialyte, which is very expensive, and but never straight water. So it's the first time that we're able to just dump in tons of water to straight to her GI tract. So G2 has been a saving grace for water for sure. This is her tomato chair. Unfortunately, insurance does not cover tomato chairs. Our nonprofit does buy a lot of tomato chairs for children. Our applications are currently open on our website. Um, the mobile base, uh, you can't see it right now, but she's on a mobile base. And um, we also bought the headrest too. So she has a mobile base, tomato chair, headrest, and something not pictured here that I'll throw up on the screen is her, her tomato chair go-to stroller. The whole setup is like $1,500-ish, it's a ton of money. If you just want the tomato chair, mobile base, and headrest, it's around like 900. 
Um, so our limit to our foundation is to give away about a thousand dollars worth of equipment to each child who, who qualifies. And that's like this setup here, which has been amazing for Ariana. So it may not work for everybody, but it works for her and we're so thankful. So we like to buy it for other kids where, when we can. More recently, we've been taking the tomato chair on planes um, and it's just hit or miss if the plane is gonna give you a hard time about it, so. The last part of the question was about our nonprofit. We are a 501c3 nonprofit. We raise money to buy disabled children medical equipment. We actually don't even take a salary from our nonprofit, so I think that makes our nonprofit a little different from others. All the money that comes into our nonprofit goes directly to the children. Other question is talking about her G-tube. What rate of feeding do we use? How we explain it to her? So basically, we I don't have a rate of feeding anymore because we stopped giving her formula. It just wasn't working for her. Um, we're trying to introduce the pureed food uh, through the tube, but that's still so new. Complete Pediatric, I think it's by Kate Farms, the food that goes through the G-tube, we're, we're trying that up here and there to see if it, it causes her to throw up or not. I get water out of the fridge and then I let it sit out at room temperature because I can only imagine that putting cold water in your G-tube would feel really weird. So I try to tell Ariana, okay, this is a little bit cold. We're gonna put water in and I give her two to four ounces at a time. And then I push, I push the syringe in and I count to, I count to 10, you know, one, two, three, etc. So I do a nice slow push. I try to make the water close to room temperature if possible, just so it feels more comfortable for Ariana. But great question. I always try to explain to Ariana what we're doing. I think she's still a little confused by it, but she's getting used to it. I think we're doing good with the G2. Ariana has something called the Toby Dynavox. It's a seeing eye gaze device where she uses her eyes to communicate. Thank you, baby. I love that she can use her eyes to communicate. So it's a really cool thing. The Toby we have is pretty outdated. It's five years old and um, we're kind of ready for a new one. This question is for Ariana and she says that she would love for Ariana to answer it herself, but um, I'm not sure if we can quite do that yet. But the question is, what do you love about Kyra? What do you love about Kyra? What do you love? Let me tell you. Ariana has loved Kyra since the day she was born. Uh, I, <laughs> we were in the hospital and um, we showed we showed um, Kyra to Ariana and <laughs> and she was so happy. She was so excited and um, just the expression that Ariana had when she saw Kyra for the first time was um, awesome. This is good. Yeah. And she's kind and she's inclusive and she helps Ariana eat. She helps with her G tube. She helps push water to the syringe. She helps give her fishies and cookies. Earlier, earlier today, I gave Kyra a cookie and um, I look away for one second and she took that cookie and was giving it to her sister. So they're really good for each other. <laughs> this question is from another person who's worked with kids with CP before and she asked, um, what lights Ariana up? What makes her so happy? And um, just like the boy you mentioned in your question, Ariana loves dogs and her favorite dog is actually a golden retriever and we will never get one because they shed so much. But gosh, Ariana loves golden retrievers. Something about the personality, being so happy. Um, so that definitely makes Ariana happy. Um, anything princess, when Ariana gets to do princess things, go to princess tea parties, um, Disney and Ice, she gets really excited, and um, she loves swimming too. So, I mean, there's a lot of things Ariana enjoys, and I try to share them with everybody here. She loves getting to do anything, going to the aquarium, going to the zoo, going on vacation. She gets excited about so many things. So, that's why we really try to do as much as we can with Ariana, because she enjoys every experience that we can give her. What's the best way to show Ariana that a person wants to be her friend? I think the best way is, you know, be kind. You can go up to Ariana, say, hi, my name is this. And I think that Ariana appreciates that. Ariana loves having friends. And basically, even though Ariana can't reciprocate, I think it's really nice to have the other person show the initiative. You know, offer to like, play with Ariana, show her something, help her play, read her a book. Ariana loves doing things. She's we were in uh, Boise, Idaho once, and there was this like, um, if you guys remember the game, I think it was called like Plank, Plinko, Planko, where like you put the straws in and the marbles, Kerplank, Kerplank, Kerplunk. 
and you put the marbles in with the straws and you pull the straws out and the marbles go flying down. Well, they had a large version of this with like those play gym balls and big sticks. Mm -hmm. And um, there was two adults playing with their kids and Ariana couldn't quite get to it because the sticks were too high for her wheelchair. And so the parents were like, oh my gosh, why don't we just make all the sticks lower so Ariana can grab them? And I was like, holy cow, like this is one of the first times that I was out somewhere and somebody offered to come up with an idea to help Ariana to include her in that activity. And I thought that was the kindest thing because so many things can be inclusive if we just think of a way for it to be. And I thought that was so kind. And I said, okay, like, that was really cool of you guys. Your kids are great with Ariana. You guys are great with Ariana. Like, who are you? What do you guys do? How did you even think of that? And she goes, oh, we're two special ed teachers. And I was like, got it. So you get inclusion. So anything where you guys can include Ariana, I think it means so much to me, but more importantly, it means a lot to her and we appreciate it. So thank you for being kind and thank you for being inclusive question about her cochlear implant. So I currently do not have her cochlear implant in. We kind of give it a break at home or sometimes it kind of just falls off when she's in her chair, but um, we should be using it as much as possible. And we definitely do try. We wear it every day for school. Yeah, so we got a cochlear, cochlear implant to her right ear a few years ago. She has a condition called ANSD, auditory neuropathy spectrum disorder. And basically this condition is super rare and it's probably from her being a micro preemie. So basically with ANSD, she, she passed her normal hearing exam, which is like the OAE. She doesn't have the normal deafness. But when they did a test called the ABR, the auditory brainstem response, um, it's, it's sedated. This uh, software will pick up the sound wave uh, going from your cochlea to your brainstem. And this will show if that nerve signal is working appropriately. Since Ariana failed two or three hearing tests in the NICU, we had to do both the OAE and ABR. So she passed the OAE, OAE, which was great. Actually, when we went to the uh, audiologist's office and we passed the OAE, OAE, she goes, oh great, she has actually no issue with her hearing, she's fine, let's do the ABR. Thinking that Ariana would pass it because people to fail the ABR but pass the OAE is really rare and it results in a condition called ANSD, which she has. So she did the ANSD, she looks at me and she's like, oh my God, she failed it. And I was like, what do you mean she failed? She goes, oh my God, she's deaf. And I'm like, oh, it was just, just to be so excited in their office thinking that Ariana had no hearing impairments to like the completely the opposite was really hard for me to handle. So she actually it has zero, zero sound going to the, to the brainstem. So there's not any sound going to the brainstem. So does that mean that she can hear anything? We don't know. Since it, since ANSD is a spectrum disorder, she can actually hear some things, we just don't know how much she can hear. They say like if she had a semi truck sitting in front of her, that she wouldn't be able to hear, hear any of it. But we know she hears something, so it's really hard to say. So I remember the right ear being worse than the left ear. So we started with hearing aids, and a lot of times doctors say that hearing aids will not help the condition ANSD because hearing aids only increase that static sound that you're supposedly hearing with ANSD. So when you have ANSD, they say that you hear jumbled sound, like static, like... So when you have hearing aids, it actually increases that sound of It doesn't clear it, clear it up, it doesn't articulate the sound, it just makes it louder static. Doctors here in Las Vegas said she would not benefit from a cochlear implant, um, but the doctors in Salt Lake City said she would, so we opted for a cochlear implant, and we just chose to do one side for now, and maybe we'll, we'll implant the other side in the future, but right now, she has a cochlear implant on her right side, because she has a condition called ANSD. I hope that I didn't butcher that up too badly. It's really complicated and kind of a long story. So this question says, what is school like for her? And I think that's a great question. Ariana loves school. Ariana loves her teachers. She has great bus drivers, but more recently I've been driving her to school and picking her up because she's been throwing up so much. Um, she's a best friend in school. We work on a Toby Dynavox there. We get her into the standard there. Some kids go in their gate trainers there. So they do a really good job utilizing their equipment and understanding each condition in each child separately. You know, it's a small classroom, but I think she's doing well there. The question is, do you and Ariana like to interact with others when out and about? And the answer is yes, we do. You know, we've gotten uh, quite a bit of followers on Instagram now and Ariana gets recognized a lot when we go out now. And Ariana is just a typical six-year-old and even though she may look a little different, she still wants to play and do six-year-old things. So yeah, we love interacting with people when we go out.
best advice you would give to a parent of a medically complex kid? My best advice is a diagnosis doesn't define your child. A diagnosis doesn't even change anything about your child. I know it can be earth shattering to hear a diagnosis of deafness or blindness or cerebral palsy or um, chromosomal abnormality, but the truth is it doesn't change who your child is. It only changes what care your child can get. It only changes the fact that they can get more medical equipment, more therapy, more things to make them more successful. Have you guys ever thought about having a PCA for Ariana, which is a personal care assistant, I believe. And hey, we just got approved for nursing. Um, the G2 makes it like more of an automatic approval. Um, we fought for it previously and just for having the condition of spastic quad CP, no vent, no G2, and we still got approved for 40 hours. The G2 kind of makes it more automatic approval for 40 hours. So we get 40 hours a week and we use that nurse um, four days a week at night because Ariana has the roughest nights. And if you're a special needs mom or dad, um, I'm sure your kids have difficult nights as well. And Ariana just wouldn't sleep because she would throw up or need to be rotated since she can't move. So she has really difficult nights and it's so hard for me and my husband to continuously get up every single night with her. And you know, she deserves to sleep better. So we didn't choose a nurse for the day. We actually chose a nurse for the night and it's been amazing. So I don't, I don't know if that counts as a PCA, but uh, we have a nurse, a night nurse, and she's absolutely wonderful. So um, if you are new here and if you're new to being a special needs mom, you know, make sure you check out to see if you qualify for nursing care because it makes all the difference. How old is Ariana? Ariana is six years old and she will be seven at the end of the month. Um, her child has a, tri a trisomy 13 year old child and she wants to know how to get medical equipment. Um, <sighs> Medical equipment is an uphill battle for sure. Um, a lot of things take six months to a year to even get because you have to do all the appeals. Sometimes people have, you know, Medicaid plus their personal insurance for their work, and so then you have to get it approved by both insurances. I would say check out your local Shriners. We got her wheelchair from Shriners. Um, look, we have a gay trainer there that took a long time to get approved, and um, we got that through our insurance, and we had two insurances at the time. Um, this tomato chair mobility base headrest not covered by insurance. We had that from a local nonprofit here. Um, actually, our local nonprofit <laughs> would no longer give Ariana, um, would never no longer support Ariana due to um, us having our own nonprofit. So we actually had a follower purchase Ariana's tomato chair for her, so that was wonderful. Um, because we we cannot buy Ariana anything through our nonprofit, but our nonprofit does donate to other kids with special needs. So make sure you check out our website www.arianarightfoundation.com and see if you qualify. But she goes on to say that the wheelchair gets too heavy to put in the trunk. Yeah, I get it. That wheelchair is so heavy and I pick it up after school every day. So we use the tomato chair with a go-to stroller a lot when we, we go places and it's been the best, honestly, it's super easy. However, at 13 years old, the tomato chair will no longer fit into the go-to stroller because this is the size two and this is the last size that fits into that go-to stroller. So basically it's what works best for you at that time. And so when Ariana is 13, mm -hmm. I don't know what our answer will be, but right now our answer is the tomato chair. It goes into the tomato stroller. So the special tomato jogger actually. This is a great question. How do I teach my kid about Ariana? What's an age appropriate way to say and explain it to children her age? What would you want peers to, how would you want peers to approach Ariana? Like at a kid's place, for example, what do adults still need to learn about disabled children and how can we make them more, and how can we make the world more inclusive for them? That's a wonderful question. Thank you so much for asking that. I just ask that, you know, please don't gawk or stare. I know a lot of people say staring is a natural reaction to see somebody like Ariana or a new equipment, but you know, maybe not staring, maybe say hello or just wave or say, what's her name? Questions are okay. And maybe questions aren't okay for everybody. So I can't answer for everybody, but in our situation, we love questions. We love educating people. We love teaching people about Ariana. That's why I started this page. And also there's different books out there that has a kid in a wheelchair. Maybe watch some YouTubes on kids in wheelchairs. I think it's important to to show your children that other kids can be different. I know it's different when you see them in person, but reading books and just giving examples of kids in wheelchairs may make it less shocking when they're out in public. Please don't stare or gawk and please teach your children not to stare. It hurts our feelings, it hurts Ariana's feelings. Ariana doesn't want to be stared at, it makes her uncomfortable. So if it makes my child uncomfortable, I mean, I think it's wrong. So 
and then yeah to how to make things more inclusive and if you come up to ariana and say how can she play or how can she play with us you know or do you want to play and, you know just like you would go up to any other six-year-old child so mm -hmm. you know thank you for asking ariana loves to play and yes she knows she wants to she wants to play with her peers and we can, we just do so differently. This person said, please talk a little slower so we can process what you're saying. And I just wanna say, I'm sorry if I talk too fast in this video, I am going to continue to work on slowing down. I do speak really fast and I mumble. So I will work on articulating here in the future. So please, I'm new to this. I'm also working on getting my microphone to attach so the sound quality will be better. So please be patient with me. I'm definitely a work in progress and we'll, we're gonna get there. Okay. And that is all the questions that I saw on my TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. If you guys thought this was beneficial and you guys wanna do another question and answer, please comment below. Um, yeah, that was really fun for me. So I really appreciate you guys asking all the questions. And I guess until next time, bye. Thanks, love you.